you can see how this root almost makes a 90 degree kink right here. What happens is that root is growing and once it hits that interface of where the container is, it starts to circle around. That's a great little pocket of oxygen that roots love to take advantage of in the container. And you'll start to see them circle around the trunk of the, or the, around the root ball of that tree. And, and we're gonna actually show how to eliminate a lot of that through what we call root ball shaving. Um, you typically will recommend that the planting hole be two to three times the size of the container. So what we got here is a 15 gallon uh, oak tree and a, uh, it's a willow oak and a containerized tree. The root ball. Now, you will see here shortly that we will actually be shaving off the sides of this root ball, but for, for demonstration sakes, what we're going to do here is try and shoot for 36 inch diameter uh, planting hole. So it's twice the size um, of the uh, container is what we're shooting for on this particular tree. So if I bring this over here, we are just about there. What we'll do is just kind of bring these edges in and just kind of shave those off a little bit and uh, just increase it slightly. But we're, we're about at two times the size of the uh, uh, the root ball. right? And now. by taking these shovels, some folks use augers and other devices to dig their hole. Uh, essentially what you're doing is pushing those, those root particles together and almost compacting them against on the side of that root ball. So one of the things you can do to break that up is decompact the size of that glazed uh, uh, wall and you can use different things. Yeah. Uh, this hand trowel that, that Lee has here works really well and you're just going to simply pull that all apart um, in order to help those roots once they're in there to penetrate that glazed wall and move out into the parent soil to grow down the road. So what we're going to do here is simply, um, you can do this multiple ways. Uh, sometimes this, the ball will just come right out of the tree. In this case, that's exactly what's happening. Um, but sometimes it's really tight. The, the, the roots are really uh, compacted in there. No problem. And these plastic containers oftentimes can be cut through pretty quickly with a utility knife if you need to take off the container with with a utility knife and just be careful because uh, yeah you can run through these holes as well here uh just be careful um as you hit different parts of the plastic a little bit tougher than other areas and you don't want that uh, knife to be swinging back at you or your fingers so just be careful but that's an option if, if, if it's really root bound and you need to get some of that uh, uh material out of there now Unlike the bone burlap, we're going to completely remove the plastic container, uh, 100%. Uh, sometimes if you can get them off, it can be used for other instances down the road or another project. Good thing to put trash and yep. mulch and other things like that in there. Yep. So, and I think we see another immediate problem, of course, is that root flare. Even on our container grown plants, we don't really see a nice established root flare on this one, so we will dig back. A little bit off the top of here, of course, just to get us down to that root flare. Uh, do you want to do that now, Casey, or do you want to? Yep, yep, go ahead so we go can figure out what our depth is. Okay. Don't, don't be fearful of damaging a few small roots. Um, a lot of people oftentimes are a little overly fearful, I think, of damaging some small roots. But the little feeder roots, um, you know, they're going to respond pretty quickly to this disturbance, much like the upper canopy would to pruning. So... Uh, we're going to see, of course, new root growth as soon as we get this in a good high quality soil. Or in our case, clay. As Lee's doing this, just as you saw in the ball and burlap trees, uh, these are also planted in, in quantity. And oftentimes they're planted two or three times between containers. So each time there's an opportunity for that tree to get deeper and deeper into the root ball from as it moves from one container to the next. They typically transport trees um, as the tree continues to grow out uh, outside of its uh, root ball 
they repot it into a bigger container to be used down the road. So, and here again, just take care not to damage this trunk with any of the hand tools that you're using. Uh, injuries on trees are permanent. You know, trees don't actually heal; they just compartmentalize. They just ultimately close the wounds that are created in them. And by the time they compartmentalize or close that injury, oftentimes wood decay fungi are already showing up to do their job. So it's very important that we not injure the main trunks. Lost a lot of trunks. And now you see I'm kind of tearing these, but I'm not really, I'm just teasing them apart in essence. I haven't really permanently damaged any of these roots at this stage. So If you hit a root that is too large, then you probably want to just stop. Uh, kind of find a new area to dig out. We are deep. This one's deep. There it is, right there, though. That's not too bad. So, oftentimes, if if you don't excavate all this out ahead of time, uh, you can use a surveying stick. I use a used to use a hot dog roaster as well to to poke around and try and figure out where those those main scaffold roots are up and around the trunk of the tree. But again, be careful not to damage the uh, the uh, trunk of that tree. Yeah, this one is pretty deep in there. Now, one other thing that may be slightly important too, this is already a fairly dry root ball. So this is one we wouldn't want to leave out in the middle of the sun. Of course, if we had to go to lunch or something for two or three hours, we may want to go ahead and protect this, get it watered in. Mm -hmm. um, at least get it in a bed of mulch or something where we could pile some some protection around here so if we were going to leave it out in the landscape for a day or two before it was planted it wouldn't dry out <laughs> Selecting trees and for our demonstration, uh, that was one of the things I really wanted to do is start figuring out some of those trees that you're going to have oftentimes when you go to a box store or nursery and what they're oftentimes going to come like. You can eliminate a lot of these issues by selectively selecting the right trees at the nursery and look, identifying these trees um, before you buy them. Um, and a lot of your uh, reputable nurseries will be able to assist you in making sure uh, that you do get uh, one that's planted at the right depth to try and eliminate this process. But oftentimes we're not thinking about that. And, uh, and you may be set on a particular tree and, and it may be very hard to find a tree in the bowl that has been planted at the nursery at the right depth. And so this is a great technique to use to uh, try and eliminate those. those this is a great uh, example. So what you'll see here as Lee, Lee was doing here, so this is this overhang was, this is not the edge of where the ball was. The ball was right here, or excuse me, the container was right yeah. here where my hand is. You can see how this root almost makes a 90 degree kink right here. What happens is that root is growing, and once it hits that interface of where the container is, it starts to circle around. That's a great little pocket of oxygen that roots love to take advantage of in the container. And you'll start to see them circle around the trunk of the, or the, around the root ball of that tree. And, and we're going to sh actually show how to eliminate a lot of that through what we call root ball shaving um, to eliminate those encircling roots around the, 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 uh, the uh, edge of the container. Well, no. So essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn our circle into a square. And what we're going to do is root shave and typically about an inch to an inch and a half on back is shave those roots off and i usually use an old saw um you don't want to use your your nicest saw but use an old saw uh, to be able to maneuver that and um essentially i'm just going to shave off that root system and what we're going to do is two things we're going to stimulate root growth but also we're going to eliminate a lot of those circling roots as well in the process so uh, it's a two-fold system. 
and we'll do it. Uh, and 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 you could make it into a if you want it into a octagon, a hexagon, whatever shape you want. I tend to go after a square. Um, and the thing, a, a lot of people at this point get really nervous. Now, you just bought this tree, and here you are. You're going to be shaving off a tremendous amount of roots on this tree. And it's important to understand when we go back and look at the ball and burlap tree, that tree lost almost 75 to 80% of its root system when it was spaded out of the ground. This tree here has pretty much 100% of its root mass. So going out there and eliminating some of these roots is not going to be detrimental to the tree as long as we do the post care, the watering, the mulching, and things like that. So it can tolerate a little bit of disturbance. The other thing is by doing this with a sharp device, um, we're also going to help stimulate more root growth as well once it gets back into the, the ball. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start shaving this side. And it's a real simple process. And you can see as we get down to the base of that tree, you can see that root kind of penetrating out there at the base. And we'll pull some of these out when it gets down in there. We got a turn. Gotta make sure what's happening as I'm shaving down. I'm coming, I'm coming at an angle instead of going straight down. So I'm gonna just go back. You see, I missed all of this right here. So not a problem. This is not a. Uh, we'll get prune that off after the fact. See those roots yep. really starting to penetrate out. Yep. We're gonna do a couple more shaves yeah, here. More. Okay. This is a big ball. Yes. Um, obviously, the more or the larger the ball, you're gonna need a bigger blade. But it doesn't matter um, if you're gonna have a smaller blade. Then you're just gonna have to do more cuts. And that's the case on this particular tree where I thought I was gonna make a square. I'm actually making a, I think I did get a hexagon. And so the very last thing we like to do is set that tree down nice and, and you can make a final cut yeah. down at the base and eliminate those bottom roots as well. I'm gonna actually bring it in a little bit. Down there. We got leverage there. We can't fight again. There we go. Yeah. So a far cry different than what we started at when we had soil up here. I'm just gonna. Where you get yeah, new measurement on this? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and tease these 
roots a little bit more outward so that when we do get that into new soil, they're ready to go. And what we're gonna do yeah. is just like on the ball and burlap tree, I'm gonna I'll just move it right over here to get it better. Is measure up again. Go ahead, I got the tree. Where that root flare is. And the depth of our ball. Get this turned around the right way. We're sitting at about 10 inches. And if you look at where we started yeah. on our container, we were at about probably about 15 inches. So between shaving the bottom and excavating out the top of the tree, we've removed almost three inches of soil, or I should say of depth, that we're going to be removing from our planting hole over here. I'm going to measure this. What did I say, 10 inches? Yep. So we're actually a little deeper here. Really? Yeah. The last yeah, I don't, I tend not to like to do this. I know. Um, it'll be settling, that will occur. Yep. I'm going to try and compact this as much as possible. A soil tamp can be useful in planting holes as well. Uh, now, one of the occurrences I've seen this oftentimes is with augers. Um, when using augers, that that, dip, that tip on that auger tends to go typically an extra yeah. four to five inches. Um, every tree's a little different. I tend to like the hand dig mine is my preference. But uh, having to go back and tamp down, you want to try and make this. <laughs> compact as possible where that tree is going to be sitting on that. What do we got here? Oh, nine and a half. Nine and a half. I yeah. feel pretty good about yeah. that. Stick our tree in there. Which and way you want to worry in it? Crazy. Look good from this direction. Look good at that direction? That direction. Maybe a little bit more spacey. Okay. And we can start putting some soil 